Let me tell you something. I couldn't even say the word nuclear. <laughs> so funny. It's so funny. It's, it's so funny. Is in it, President it's, Obama's is it, book, is it, is it uh, he wrote that on the night <laughs> the Navy SEALs Team yeah, 6 killed so Osama bin fun. Laden. Oh, yeah. He phoned you. He called remember, you to let you know remember first. This? Do you remember yeah. where you were? Oh, man. Comedy gold. Yeah. That was that was fun too, right? Yeah, it was wasn't that comedy gold, everybody? Yeah, oh yeah. Right, Go what on. was going on when you got that call? Huh. Start with Mike Lindell. I don't know how much I can take this though. I don't often do the whole lib comedy scene. This is not something you can stream on YouTube either. I remember last time I streamed Jimmy Kimmel for like five seconds, the YouTube algorithm picked it up and, and had my thing taken down. It was fast. The video got locked so quick. Yeah, Jimmy Kimmel sucks. I don't know if he's the worst. I mean, Jimmy Fallon's pretty bad. Just all the Jimmys, you know? What is it? Uh, Snoop Dogg had a good joke at his expense. He was like, around, like, we call uh, a Jimmy a condom because a Jimmy's a scumbag and everyone hates when he's on. Uh, that was... That was the line, if I remember, when he was ripping into Jimmy Kimmel. History, only one pillow salesman has ever been called to the Oval Office because the president was unhappy with his election results. By the way, everybody, please practice safe sex, use condoms, they work. That was not, uh, that was not an endorsement of, uh, you know, going raw. Everybody, wear condoms, especially if you're with uh, new sexual partners. Our next guest is that pillow man, and he has a lot to say. All nine of those Supreme Court justices are going to vote 9-0 because they, here's your, is that a hand or a foot? And they're going to go, it's a hand. It's like the old mafia days when I, when I used to bet football. You have been warned, ooh, you know? Yeah. He couldn't run a peanut factory. No. Not the peanut factories are, I don't know what they are, but did you see any nudity in porn? I'm getting death threats and everything <laughs> else. Frank speech, if you can't come in, they're trying to turn our power off. They're, they're attacking our power grid here. They're attacking his power grid. Please welcome Mike Lindell. This is uh, this is kind of fucked up though, because I know Jimmy Kimmel's like, oh, comedy gold, ratings, money, kerpla, kind of stuff. But uh, at the end of the day, you are platforming someone who's pretty closely tied to the whole QAnon stuff. Well, thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. We were supposed to be in a bed together. I'm yeah, sorry no. about that. The COVID people we said have rules here in California. Have you been vaccinated? Uh, no, I'm no, not you have vaccinated. not. <laughs> I meant for rabies. I didn't mean yeah, for no, COVID. No, no, no. <laughs> I did bring you a book, though. You brought me a book. I read your book, by the way. You read it. I did read your book. I think a lot of this is going to be like it's totally okay. I'm not platforming a dangerous conspiracy theorist. It's it's fine because I'm going to make fun of them. See, everybody, it's for the laughs. It's for the the chuckles. Kind of like how the other Jimmy did that with Donald Trump. Except what he did is he just brushed his hair and he made him seem all normal and friendly like and you're like oh yeah that guy's not gonna that guy's not gonna kind of incendiary rise the flames of the white Aryan nationalists in the country <laughs> you know that cover on there that's where that was up 14 days with the drug dealers I read it on my iPad an so and they did an intervention on me yeah and I came upstairs downtown Minneapolis came upstairs and I said uh the one guy says, you know, you've been telling us for years this pillow thing is just a platform for God, and we're gonna and we want you to quit and come back and help us someday. Now I got the Lindell Recovery Network and I'm helping millions of addicts and uh, And you've set an example by recovering from a horrible addiction to crack. I mean, really yeah, yeah, a, a horrible terrible. thing. Yeah. And I have to tell you something, I know you might think this sounds weird, but I read uh, Hunter Biden's book as well, and there are you guys have a lot in common. Yeah, yeah. Like Basically, uh, it's a little worse than just platforming him and making fun of him. He's, he's, he's kind of getting an opportunity now to, to do a little hero arc, you know, live in front of millions and millions of people. Millions of people who might now go check out Mike Lindell's website and his own news broadcast where he pushes far-right conspiracy theories on a, on a pretty regular basis. You really do. The same uh, things when you're paranoid, the paranoids that go with it. and That's what I want to talk to you about, the paranoia. No. You are here. You've been hiding. You've been in hiding. Is that correct? Yeah, but not because of paranoia. <laughs> well, how do you know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, haven't been at, you haven't been home for a couple of months, back home in Minnesota. Is this true? Tell yeah, me if yeah. I have this No, one. that's right. I've been working hard on this, uh, the election and the machines and... Uh, and the machines. The, and we've heard a lot about the yeah, machines. Yeah. But you were worried that someone is trying to kill you. Well, we've had threats, many, many, many threats. You have? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, you started out as a bar owner in Minnesota, right? Well, I started out... Uh, 
I was always kind of an entrepreneur. My sister flooded a third-story building of an apartment complex, so I became a carpet cleaner. You did a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. You then got uh, addicted got to no. cocaine and then crack. Mm -hmm. You have a gambling problem. You supported yourself counting cards. Right. You um, smoked more crack. You would go to these casinos. You'd count cards. They'd throw you out. You were arrested multiple times. You had to sell your beloved bar. Yeah. You started making pillows. You quit smoking crack. You made millions of dollars. And then you fell in love with Donald Trump, and now here we are. Is that correct, basically? <laughs> did I miss anything? Um, well, you missed one thing. What on, did I miss? On January 16, 2009, by the grace of God, he did free me of all the addictions. Yes. And I woke up, I'm going, I'm looking around, I'm going, I was in into politics. I didn't know anything about what a conservative was, a liberal. I didn't know a filibuster from a millibuster. I didn't know anything. Some would say you still don't, Mike, to well, be honest. Maybe yeah. so. I do say I do say wash and not wash. You know? Yeah. And, and, okay. And so, I, so I, and uh, so I said if I ever ran, I'd put the R back in Washington. You know. Uh huh. But uh, anyway, no. The summer of '16, I was invited by Donald Trump. I had never met him before. In uh, uh, August 15, uh, 2016, and it was a meeting. He brought me in, and he said. I just checked out the Lindell Recovery Network. It's filed under the IRS Form 990, so less than 50K revenue, and it has no transparency whatsoever. Really? Huh. Well, probably nothing to see there. He, we talked about, he says, Mike, you do all your manufacturing here. I want to bring the manufacturing back. And we talked, I said, you know, I used to be a crack addict. I want to help, help millions of addicts. with." You uh, liked his Made in the USA, this idea, this Made in the USA policy that he had. Well, yeah, if you can, if you can make it here, a lot of things you can. I've yes, he doesn't make anything. I mean, he's got like his website. Yeah, obese the beast. I kind of agree. I think like already. I mean, it's we're only four minutes in, but it feels like a disaster on all levels. It feels basically like you platform Mike Lindell. You've already let him plug his book. You've already let him plug his whole persona. Like everyone loves uh, a restorative story. Everyone loves that arc. That arc always sells well. It's like, yeah, I used to be an addict, but now I'm not. I used to be this, now I'm not. Especially uh, Americans uh, love the addition of God into it. It was like it was by the grace of God that all these things happened. Like two thirds made. You know, elsewhere. but there's a lot of things you can't make here. This is my my sheets. There's no weavers or spinners left in the United States. Um, my towels, I use all U.S. cotton. I have to ship it over because they don't have the technology here. I, let's be truthful. And by the way, I have a buzzer here in case. <laughs> Just for the lawyers, in case there's anything that we have to challenge. Right. People did not, a lot of people didn't want you to come on the show. Yeah. On uh, liberals and conservatives, everybody said, told me, don't have you on the show. Uh, and they told you, don't go on the show. Yes, they did. Yeah. But I think it's important that we talk to each other. Absolutely. And I think yeah. that. Yes. And I, yes. I also, you know, I don't like. I don't think there's any validity to any of this stuff that you're saying. And I've studied you i really have and yeah, i've, I've have. 22 hours you watch frank i heard yeah. i watched you last <laughs> night at 11. i thought there's gonna be more to that but no he's, he's just unironically doing the marketplace of ideas meme basically yeah blog, i've right. been watching you I, and i'll I, you know what i laugh at a lot of the stuff but a lot of people don't laugh because yeah. a lot of these ideas that you espouse um i think you know uh, i think you could potentially draw a line from uh, those two the riot we had at the Capitol where people were killed well, and here's, a lot of bad things. Here's what I want to say to that. I didn't get anything until January 9th, and this was something different. This was the machines. This was an attack through the machines. You've seen it. And what I'm saying is to everyone, this isn't a Democrat or a Republican thing. For me, it's putting it out there. It's like this. I want to ask everyone this. If someone was out there saying my pillows had rocks and knives in it, I would say, hey, come and look at the beautiful patented fill. And right. I would say, show me the rocks and knives. But these are, these are all like rehearsed lines, too. We heard him saying this exact same line on his show yesterday. This is like, you know, he's, he's really used to the spin. Indian smart man, they didn't do that. They're just suing people. Well, and saying, well you're saying it. they have rocks and knives in their voting machines, and they're saying, no, we don't. But they don't show their, their machines. That's the big thing. They're even trying to stop it. But the federal County. government has, I mean, every... No, they did not. They didn't have this evidence until... Like, you see, what you're doing right now is you're actually legitimizing this argument. Like, which has absolutely no bearing in reality. If you want to spread like QAnon based conspiracy theories that like Venezuela is secretly trying to impact the voting systems of the United States and has not only done that, but is somehow they're simultaneously in abject poverty, but also capable of manipulating the election of the most powerful country on the planet. Like the, the, all of a sudden now we're, we're in the realm where there are people who would be like, well, I don't know. 
I mean, typically I'm I'm all about what Jimmy's saying, but there is some veracity to this. I I, I want to learn more until January 9th. See? Well, and yet, but they have this evidence now. You say no, we're bringing it all to the Supreme Court. This will all get there. But anyway. you have said repeatedly that you're bringing this evidence, and that I assume you haven't seen this evidence. Have you seen oh, it? Oh yeah, I've seen it. Or well, I wouldn't. Why be is all, it I taking so all long? If this is I such wanted, a serious thing, because I wanted to. As you've seen in Absolute Interference, the new one I put out. There's a cyber, it's a white hat hacker that's, that works for the government, one of the best in the world. When our country's a... I just want to quickly interject this with a, a quick word of wisdom. Or alternate data yeah. or whatever. Alternative yeah. facts. Yeah. You know what's so horrible here? And he, my I, totally classical modern metaphysician, science is science. How? What is returning now in this new racist right? are the worst cliches of so-called postmodernism. There is no objective reality. There are just different stories circulating. There is no objective truth. So why should also those who oppose us not have the right to say this and so on and so on? Here, let me conclude with another way. I hope you agree with me. I'm not only for truth as truth, objective. There are facts, even ideological values, where you don't debate. I'm even for a progressive Although return. your facts might be different from my facts, but anyway, yeah. Okay, okay, but we can debate it, I hope, rationally. But uh, This is such a salient fact being stated by someone who's covered in food stains. Like, just, Zizek, what, what a wonderful creature you are. Don't you agree that a certain amount of dogmatism is not only not bad, but it's a sign of progress? What do I mean by this? Mm -hmm. Would you like to live in a country where you have to argue against rape. No, I would like to live in a country where the fact that you don't rape is simply in a good sense dogmatic. It's a fact. So if anyone argues, you know, in that stupid way, what if women really enjoy it or whatever, you don't even fight him, you just laugh at him. He's a so there are certain facts that are absolutely ideological. Well. And yep. this is even progress. It's a great sign of progress that, at least superficially in our countries, you don't debate it. It's great regression, like torture was the same. Till 10 years ago, okay, government were doing it, but it was not a matter of public discourse. Now we again debate, should be torture or not. This is ethical catastrophe. I completely agree with Shishek in that point. I don't agree with everything Shishek says, but right there, that is just like, right on course. These are the guys that go in for the cyber attacks and check it all out and, vi and validate it. So I hired them to validate the evidence that I have that these guys brought me over here. Now realize, Jimmy, the only reason I have the evidence is because I became a voice after January 9th where they're going, hey, we've tried to get this out there and they and nobody had. Nobody. Do you ever think it's weird? I mean, just objectively looking at yourself and going, why is it that the only person in the country- It, 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 like, it goes down to this, right? It's it's not an issue of free speech. It's an issue of whether or not you're going to use your platform to platform someone else who has an opposing idea that we as a, you know, as society have moved past. Like that great debate that took place between Bill Nye the science guy and whatever creationist, creationist asshole was on the other side of that argument over evolution. Something that I would assume at this point is not something that we need to keep discussing. We don't like, you know, Modern society and all the wonderful marvels that we have from the scientific discovery and the processes therein has given us so many plentiful gifts like technology and stuff. And a lot of that comes uh, on the backs and the shoulders of those who have put forward a lot of time in order to discover and ascertain th certain things about the world. That's just like, that's how knowledge is built. We It's accumulated. It's collective. It's a beautiful thing in that regard. Uh, we also constantly correct ourselves because we're never, ever going to know the answers to everything. So we're always going to update and evolve our knowledge. But if you've got someone who's stuck in basically the Stone Age in terms of their understanding of the known universe and, and they can't even begin to grasp the concept of evolution or evolutionary theory and they want to now debate that in the modern age and platform it and, and put it on television and then a whole bunch of people are going to listen to that as if these two ideas have equal merit and weight. That is a problem in my mind. That's, that's what Zizek is talking about. And that's basically what's happening here. We have someone who does not live in reality in terms of his understanding of the world. He's he's bought into QAnon conspiracy theories. Sorry, QAnon conspiracy theories, which at their heart 
I mean, are deeply anti-Semitic. Uh, they're conspiratorial. Uh, they, they, they're about a, a cabal of uh, liberal elites who, uh, high on adrenochrome, consume children's blood and are pedophiles and are being covered up by the highest facets of government and all, all that kind of shit, right? People who bought into that conspiracy theory, that shouldn't be platformed as an idea that has equal merit or weight with the idea that that is wrong, right? And if you have one of the biggest talk shows in America doing that is actually dangerous, like incredibly dangerous. ...who has this evidence is a guy who sells pillows on cable. I bring it all the way back to when I was on your show here that in 2014, it was the Forrest Gump thing. I don't know. <laughs> you, you think, I know. You know what? I can see how that would be in your head. Honestly, let's show that picture because weirdly, as a coincidence, you were here yeah. with Bob Seger's yeah, yeah. crew, right? Yeah, or something? There, yeah, and I took a picture, you know, of you and I'm going, my friends that went live, they're going, Oh, you what took you... a picture of me. Yeah, oh, yeah there yeah, you go. go. That's <laughs> me. <laughs> so, Mike. My friends are going, what are you doing on stage with Jimmy Kimmel? And I said, Now, no. this actually, I think, plays into what we're talking about. Here. I could see how, I mean, you're worth many millions of dollars. I have no much, no idea how much money you're worth. I give it all to charity. Uh, I do. You give, I really okay, do. whatever you no, do with no, it, no, um, no. whatever you do with it, but uh, I could see how you would think, well, there must be some divine intervention here. Yeah, because how did a person who was in, you know, a motel room buying crack and right. gambling and, you know, away from his family right. and all of these things, how did this happened to me i must be special but i'm going to suggest to you that maybe it's a coincidence and that maybe this information that you have that you believe in i mean let's be honest your website doesn't even really work like what they're debating right now and what he's platformed is the concept that divine providence selected mike lindell of all the other human beings on the planet of all the other people who might be addicted to drugs or whatever was personally selected by god himself or herself or I don't know which one we're on now pointed out and was like Mike Lindell you are the chosen one you will now be rid of all your addictions you will now make a fortune selling pillows and so saith the Lord right is, is basically what you've given credence to why would you think that you have broken Themself this itself, code yeah. of all people. It wasn't me that broke it. God is a black man. I mean, in essence, shouldn't God not be human in any way, shape, or form? That would be very unusual. Like God, If God is supposed to be something that is so omnipowerful, that is capable of creating the known universe, not just human beings, but space and time and physics and quantum foam, quirks and quarks, all that shit, probably, probably not just like an old white dude, you know, sitting on a cloud. Pro probably not an old white dude. Gonna, gonna guess that's probably wrong. They brought it to me. But and these this was people not are not. The only reason they did, Jimmy, is because I have the I, voice. I worry about you. I feel like you are maybe self-destructive. Like you have um, lost everything repeatedly so many times in your life. You've had a bar, you, you know, all of these things. You know the story. Yeah. But now you it. think maybe that that's what, I mean, now I feel like we're going to, you're going to be out dressed as Spider-Man on Hollywood Boulevard at the end of this whole thing. <laughs> Dominion is suing you, you know, for one point three billion dollars. You got to realize. You got to realize my pillow countersued them for, and what Alan Dershowitz said will be the biggest lawsuit, the most important in history. Right, and we'll for see the how First it turns Amendment out. right of free speech. Well, for one that's of you, beautiful. this is not going to work out well. Okay, whether well, it be them or you. That's not even the lawsuits you. we're talking about. What I'm talking about, no matter who you are in this country. I'm not just some person that decided, hey, I want, uh, you know, your producer asked me, they said, you know, Mike, would you have done it if it was reversed? Knowing what I have now, if they would have put Donald Trump back in on December 14th and knowing what I had right now, I would still be sounding the alarm going, you guys, these machines, they were hacked and we have to do something in our country. I believe that you are them. sincere. You know, I also think there's something going on from the crack or something well, that you, has, you, you know, whatever that has um, <laughs> ma made you think, the, I mean, you mentioned mentioned paranoia what made me think that what made me do this did, is like, did you like, do any preparation for this was that gonna be your like your big moment was that it was that the gotcha like oh don't worry don't worry mike lindell won't get the better of me i've got i've got something in the back pocket anything goes awry i can just pull out the crack card you know i can just be like well you 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 smoke crack so i mean checkmate check mike Lind mike lindell Hopefully millions and millions of people watching not even one percent of them takes any of this remotely seriously hopefully 
I mean, yeah. When I met Donald Trump on August 15, 2016, I didn't know anything about politics, but I met this man that had problem solution, and he knew what they'd manifest to. And I went out, talked to his employees. I got out there, wow, this guy could be the greatest president ever. I talked to his employees, and every one of them said the same thing. I went back to Minnesota, and I said, I did a press release to the press. I was the media's darling. And all of them go, you know, I do this press release. I said, I met him. Didn't even tell him what we talked about. And I was attacked like you've never seen. And I'm going, they called me a racist. They right. called me everything you can imagine. And I'm going, I thought news. they were Thank real you. people. Appreciate you know, I'm it. Going, wow, what did I do? I just said, I met this guy. You know, I had not been into politics. So I got behind a person that I he kept his promises. I had vetted him. And I'm not going to change on something oh, this I is worse than Jimmy Dore. Now, if I didn't have this evidence, Jim, Jimmy, 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 Jimmy Dore platforming the Proud Boys uh, just as a concept is worse. But the reach is like it's uh, apples to oranges here, right? Like we've got we've got Jimmy Dore who who will get like what a eight hundred thousand views maybe uh, on a on a video and, and a couple thousand in a live stream maybe like nine thousand live stream viewers. This this is going to be seen by millions, millions and millions of people. I mean, live alone, it must have been like at least what like ten million, twenty million. Like this this is this is monstrously huge. But I have it. It's real, so people can say, "Oh, you're an ex crack addict, so your brain's not right." Well, yeah. you know what? They can say all they want. It's going to come out. I keep putting the evidence out. It's going to come out. Maricopa County, they're trying to stop as we speak today. I know. That's a ridiculous that operation you know going what? on there. All we need is to look at the machines. If there's nothing to hide, why won't... Is this going to convince anybody? Probably of his viewing audience, very low. I'm not I'm not saying that. I mean, the reach is large enough. There will be a couple people who will now look into Mike uh, Lindell's stuff and all that kind of thing. But what's more dangerous than that is platforming both him and these ideas as being, again, Again, equal to those of which are in direct opposition to reality, right? Like at the end of the day, if you have a QAnoner and you bring a QAnoner on for a debate and the debate is not just going to be utterly ri like ridiculing him and you're going to be like, all right, well, let's just sit down and have a, ca a casual conversation. I just, I want to hear what you're all about. And then when they're like, well, I'm basically about this cannibalistic uh, cabal of evil pedophiles that control everything and are in cahoots with George Soros, uh, Hillary Clinton, and basically uh, the savior of mankind is Donald Trump and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And the retort to that statement is, well, you know, you once smoked crack, so I think uh, you're not all there. You know, like in the act of doing this, we've now legitimized that first part as actually being perhaps correct. Not not whether or not it's utterly ridiculous, not based in reality, but it could be perhaps correct, right? Well, they let the American people look at it. Well, it's not the American people. It's some company from Florida that has a guy. Yeah, who and 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 a beast to beast is, is correct. People are going to sympathize with Mike Lindell in this interaction, right? Like Jimmy Kimmel is bullying a man who used to be a crack addict. Uh, and, you know, belitter belittling him and ridiculing him rather than actually addressing uh, the statements he's making. Like, Jimmy Kimmel could have come out here and been like, okay, well, here's why this is factually incorrect. I want to show you now information. This is directly from this, uh, the system, this blah, blah, blah. Here's the facts, the figures, the logic, ev everything. Instead of being like, well, I want to I have a conversation with you and tell you that I think uh, the drugs have poisoned your brain. You know, that's that's basically where it went. Spread conspiracy theories in the past. It's not an unbiased company that's Why evaluating isn't Dominion? If I was Dominion, I would have said right in the beginning when this evidence came out on January 9th to me, said, hey, just look at everybody. And then let's look at it. These the are go government. federal government, These guys, which at the time was run by people who were appointed by the Trump Dominion, administration. You know, we look pay into for, this. We pay for and all these machines. they say it is the most secure election we've ever no, had. No, he said that. The same guy. <laughs> hey, no, I mean, the listen. same guy. That was Chris Krebs. That was Chris Krebs that said that. Do you know three weeks ago, Chris Krebs and Adam Schiff were on Morning Joe, and they asked him, what's the biggest threat to our country right now? And they said, a China attack, cyber attacks from China, right down to local races. Chris Krebs said that. He didn't know about uh, yeah, this. Yeah, but that has nothing said, to do with this. He said it was a secure election. He did not have this on January 9th. This was after this. I want to just say one thing real quick, because yeah. I don't want anybody right. to, to get the wrong idea here. We're going to, we have limited time on this show. Yeah, we'll yeah, put yeah. this whole conversation on YouTube so that people can see the whole right, thing. Right, right. All right, but I need to take a commercial break. Okay. Mike Lindell okay. is here with us. We'll be right back. So right there, you didn't contest any anything he just said out loud none of it not not a single word of it you actually said we're, we're going to go to a commercial break and we're going to continue afterwards like everyone who's now in that commercial break time those ideas are just festering they're just out there in the ether now in front of millions of people that didn't have a reach that like never would have heard these kind of things before mike lindell was allowed to come on the show 
back with Mike Lindell. Music from Tom Jones is on the way. Congratulations on your Razzie Awards. Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> worst picture. And, and the strategy still is like, I'm going to keep ridiculing you. Yeah, you know, you used to be a drug addict. Uh, you're not all there. Oh, you, you got some bad actor awards. You know, zinger, we got you again. Bazing. Worst actor. Uh, <laughs> have they sent the trophies to you? No, they did. I, I, I don't know what I wanted, but I no. guess it's an honor. I, mean. I guess so. Your friend, uh, Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> Giuliani uh, was also the recipient of a rap. Like he comes across as so friendly and normal here. Like if I had never heard of Mike Lindell before and I was watching this, I'd be like, oh, just why, why are you being mean to that that dude? You know, he he came from nothing. He was a crackhead and now he's done this. I mean, what's going on here? The award yeah, yeah. for worst supporting actor, I believe. Right. Now he got raided by the feds today. Mm -hmm. uh, is he somebody you are in touch with? No. 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 Is really. Donald Trump somebody you're in touch with? I've, I've talked to him maybe once every well, month or so, you know, if I'm down there. When's the last time you spoke to him? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I guess, when he said he was worried about what was going down at the border. He said, I'm really worried about what's going on. And he called you to tell you he was worried about that? No, no, no. We, we were talking about something else. Tell but me it, about he, that his meeting. His was the border. That meeting when you went into his office in the heat of all this craziness going on. Mm -hmm. There's you. You're at the White House. And right. let's zoom in on see. And, and this is a lot has been made of this. Right. This was... It said martial law, if necessary, on the documents that you had. Right. You say those were not your papers. No, they weren't. I had four papers of the evidence, and then there's these lawyers, there's that whole team of lawyers, like 20, 30 lawyers, they had given me two pieces of paper and said, if you get a meeting, go ahead and can deliver this. Had you I read even, that? No, I had not even read it. So you were like their paper mule. I'm just a delivery. Yeah. I'm bringing yeah. this. And then I said to him, I said to him, I said, here, and this came from a lawyer. And there was uh, Robert O'Brien, this national security by a couple other people. And he read the first line after we had talked about the evidence. He said, bring, bring these upstairs and see. Did if you discuss oh. martial law with no. the president? No. No, absolutely not. You were there for what reason? You're not pushing back on any of this. You're just like, <laughs> I'm just asking questions. I'm just going to let him speak and give just the most wild answers to all these things. This is ridiculous. This is a lot worse than I thought it was going to be. Bring him the evidence from January 9th about the machines and this attack by China on our country through the... And election. then what did he do and what did his people do with this evidence? Because it seems like that's something he'd be... The best thing Jimmy Kimmel has had is just basically vilifying addicts. That's that's it, you know? Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do a mule joke in the middle of this. Like, like fucking the shit that is being spit out of his mouth. Very they interesting. Took, they, took, they took me. He, I said, here, and these are from a couple lawyers, and he... And he, but I showed him this. I said, these are things that cyber attacks, longitude, latitude, machines, and uh, attacked by China. Do you really and, understand this stuff? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Like, what does the, do you know what an IP address is? Yeah. IP and then the, we have the IDs of the community. Now we the what does IP game, stand for? The, Do you the, know where the where the I don't know what it stands for. The See, IP. I think that you should know what IP stands for if you have evidence. It's the, where the computers are at, wherever the IP address is of right. the computers. I right. mean, I, I mean, I'm so not you're gonna, not an expert when it comes to this. I don't stuff. have to be. I'm not an expert on, on it. I don't have to be an expert. I know that they know. When it's uh, that shady debate tactic, you know, where you're, you're basically like, well, I'm going to identify one piece of factual information that I have that you don't, and that is that uh, IP stands for Internet Protocol, and based on that alone, I'm going to rip apart everything you said. Why not push back on any of the things he said out loud right now? Any of them. And been like, that's factually false. Like, it's flagrantly false. None of that is true. Uh, like, the evidence is overwhelming in the other direction. Overwhelming. Like, it's, it's just like, it's, it doesn't even take a cursory, like, Google search to find out that you're lying. You are lying. You are lying to your teeth. You are a horrible liar, and you are doing it for fun and profit right now. And it's dangerous. It ended up getting people killed. People take this shit very seriously, especially well-armed militias who are really, really tapped into this kind of stuff. And they're very upset and angry and, again, well-armed. Holy fuck. When I talked to the guy that validated it... Do you have a hotmail address? Be honest, Mike. No, no I do not. <laughs> You donated $50,000 to uh, a legal fund that was used to bail out the, as they call him, the Kenosha shooter, this kid no, who had the not, assault rifle. True. No, that's not true. Did, but, oh, so, but what's not true about it? No, I gave, I gave money to a Lynn Woods Foundation and whatever, and he did stuff with many different things. So he did... He that, that alone should be like alarm bells are ringing. Lynn Wood, the QAnon conspiracy lawyer. Yes, the one that is directly tied to Kyle Rittenhouse. Fucked up shit. Fucked up shit. Probably shouldn't have him on my nighttime show. Probably shouldn't have him in front of millions of people right now talking about this kind of stuff. Holy fuck. He didn't, you did he not know he was of, using he that all money? He has all kinds of stuff. He has all kinds of... Uh, 
of different things that he. I was- mean, the only good thing that my uh, Linwood did was be massively corrupt and didn't steal it. That's probably the best thing that Linwood did was steal a bunch of money from people willing to give it to like QAnon conspiracy people or people trying to support uh, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse. That's that's that was uh, Linwood's service, you know, to the world. When you found out he was using money to bail this kid out, did you ask for that money back? I didn't know he used it for that. He used it for what I was. But using once for you was found out fraud. that he no, used he it. used it for election fraud. He was that's what he told you. Fraud. No, that's what it was on his website. Someone did a story. The news grabs it and goes, "You gave money to Lynn Wood. You did this with it." Well, they didn't check it out. It's a, it's more fake news that come out there and and like th- that absolves you of nothing. That this is the weakest defense. You can't be like, "Well, I just threw money at a QAnon conspiracy theorist who's incredibly dangerous and is now banned on most social media platforms again for doing that whole you know inciting people to violence that that kind of stuff calls to violence." You may have remembered that whole January sixth thing. I don't know. It was it was an episode. Anyways, uh, what else is going on, Jimmy? Stories with well, Alan, but you Alan, did get money. Alan Duke Lynn probably Wood. put that on there. You know, he decided what's true or not in this country <laughs> do you believe in bigfoot um why would you pivot why would why would you pivot he just lied he lied to your face and said a whole bunch of really fucked up shit that is very dangerous and has consequences why are you pivoting to another shitty joke oh my god i don't know probably not <laughs> i haven't seen it so i don't know uh, are you planning to run for governor of minnesota i wouldn't run to be a dog catcher right that now if those machines are still in oh stop no. the presses <laughs> You got this guy out there. This is a fraud. Oh this is God. not the man. <laughs> oh hey, my he needs some. You gotta. This this is the equivalent, by the way. What you're seeing right now in real time is is the hair rub. This is it. This is the Donald Trump, Jimmy Fallon rubbing of the hair. That's that that is what is happening right here in real time. And and there it is. This is like the fucking cherry on top of the whole normalization pie. Get this guy some blue shirts. Yeah, well, Hold on a second. <laughs> I'm as comfortable in my pajamas as I am in a bleeding bandage on top of my head. And see, he's not that bad a guy. He laughs at himself, and that's what makes him more human, you know? Like, come on. It's it's all fun and games. Yeah. You got this guy out here. He's claiming to be me. That's an imposter. First they went for- Like, this shit is not fodder for fucking liberal comedy hour. Like, this man is dangerous. He peddles in QAnon conspiracy theories. Did no one learn anything? Like, I I, I can't believe this. How, how long ago was the January 6th? Oh yeah, it was on January 6th. That wasn't that long ago. Holy fuck. First they went for our phones and now they're sending in clones. <laughs> wow, that's... Look at them. Look at them. That's not a... Now I don't know which one of you is which. I'm really confused. <laughs> I challenge you to a pillow fight at the Minnesota State Fair this summer. You got it. You got it. That's where we settled this shit. We settled... Yeah, this is going to be an example probably of uh, top three worst like irresponsible platformings of all time in, in, in history uh, in terms of how this was handled, how the whole thing went down, and how it was all just a big set up for a Mike Lindell impersonator and a, a bit like the whole thing was for a bit oh, gonna kill you guys you guys are but look how funny is he like he laughs at himself you know he's normal he's normal this whole thing's normal the guy who had the ear of the president for a long time who was feeding him conspiracy theories on a regular basis he's just just a regular old pillow guy you know he's even got a he's even got a wonderful story our targets <laughs> for killers Jimmy this is a chance for you to show some leadership for once uh. to kill Yeah, no, I totally agree. I'm tweeting that out. Who the fuck thought this was a good idea? Like, just asinine, ridiculous bullshit behavior. This stuff is dangerous. It's almost as if, like, either they don't care or they just don't understand, in which case that's, like, that's it's equally as dangerous. King Solomon moment. Cut the pillow in half. Whoever (laughs) screams more, it's my pillow! (laughs) All right. <laughs> yeah, Fav Sats, you did. You certainly inspired one. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't know who to talk to don't now. Worry. I really don't. I'm fully vaccinated. I had the liquid polyurethane vaccine. I'm good to go. Have you tried the oleandrin? I look. I tried. I tried. I gargle with echinacea. <laughs> I'm a good man. The Chinese are so close. There's a Chinese theater across. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's all funny. He's he's silly. Every but he's like a cartoon character. (laughs) And you tell me they haven't even hacked into our phones? I don't even look at a phone. (laughs) I carry a jitterbug with me at all times. We got got a couple of Mike Lindells here. I don't know which one is which. All I know is that uh, my pillows are no longer sold at any stores. Pillow and Eve, not my pillow and Steve. All right. Michael and Dell, everybody. We'll be back with Tom Jones.
So I am. there's the uh, the liberal to fash pipeline for everybody. If you're wondering what it looks like uh, when it's acted out in real time, uh, there you have it. It's uh, it's not uh, not exactly something that's fun to watch. If we're on Jimmy, I just want to see this George Bush interview for two seconds. Let's see him uh, normalize a war criminal. Like you are useless. You are utterly useless. Just as like you know. A First human guest being tonight on every level. spent nine years as co-owner of the Texas Rangers baseball team before deciding to go into his father's business, which is being president of the United States. He is now an artist with a new book of paintings and stories called Out of Many One Portraits of America's Immigrants. Please welcome President George W. Bush. Hello, Mr. President. Jimmy, thank you. It's good to see you. Thanks for uh, joining us. Da -da 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 Boy, I like you got a bunch of drunks there. Yeah. That's, that's the least of it. <laughs> you, I was hoping that you would be able to come out to uh, see you in person and celebrate 420 together the night before the show. <laughs> How you doing? How's everything going? Where, you're in your office right now? Yeah, right here in Dallas. Thank you. Everything's great, Jimmy, and thank you for having me on the show. It's uh, I, I'm sorry I'm not there as well. Last time I was there, I had a blast. I had so much fun with you last time. I think we had almost too much fun because I had so many questions that I didn't get to, and one of them, which was like something I really wanted to ask about, is something that it turned out Hillary Clinton wrote about in her book. She said that after Trump, you remember that guy? <laughs> yeah. Barely. After Trump gave his, uh, his speech at the inauguration, you turned around and said to a small group of people, including her, that was some weird <laughs> oh. is, that, is that an accurate account of what was said? You know, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good answer. Can you remember, this is something I was thinking about today too, do you remember the nuclear codes? Like, I'm sure they changed them. I hope they changed them. But um, do you hey, Jimmy, remember let me, yours? Let me, let me tell you something. I couldn't even say the word nuclear. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. It's so funny. It's, it's so funny. Is In it, President it's, Obama's is it, book, is it, is it uh, he wrote that on the night <laughs> the true. Navy SEALs Team yeah, 6 killed so Osama much bin Laden. Oh, yeah. He phoned you. He called remember, you to let you know remember first. This? Do you remember yeah. where you were? Oh, man. Comedy gold. Yeah. That was that was fun, too, right? Yeah. Was, wasn't that comedy gold, everybody? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, Go what on. What was going on when you got that huh. call? I do remember. Uh, I got a call from uh, Logan, who uh, is my assistant. I was eating a souffle. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> Five hundred thousand to one million dead uh, civilians. It's amazing. Yeah, how how we laugh. Oh, how we laugh. How we laugh. You know, what a great time. I, I assume this is twenty minutes of this, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah, four minutes in, they're still laughing. Okay, now that this has been verified by the Pentagon, would you be surprised if we were visited by creatures from another planet? Oh, yeah, let's talk about aliens. Can we also talk about how the whole yellow cake uranium thing wasn't verified? It turned out the whole thing was a massive lie and that they actually entered into a really long and prolonged war that resulted in, again, hundreds of thousands of dead people. That 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 could be something you could ask him. Might be, might be a question, you know, you could squeeze it in between that and the funny story. But... I think we all mainly agree also that we need border enforcement and uh, reforming the system will actually make the border not only more secure, but more compassionate. Well, I don't know if we all agree, but yeah, I think most- And how the U.S. troops use depleted uranium tipped rounds that still cause birth defects in Iraqi children. That sounds like liberal comedy gold. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Jimmy could use that. You should be in the writer's room. My word. And I'll tell him. I said, you know, President Bush said you're a Oh, uh, he's a painter. He's he's normalized everyone. He's just a nice old painter. Friendly old painter. Oh, do you remember when he got the shoe thrown at him? I wonder why someone would do that. I wonder why they would throw a shoe at his face and what that symbolizes. But hey, it was funny, right? It was it was fun. And your reaction time was good. You know, you, you ducked out of it just, just in just in time there. So that one's that one's hilarious. Yeah, Hitler was also a painter. Hitler would be on Jimmy Kimmel's show, were he alive today, I'm sure. He would be on there and be like, well, that was that was silly, wasn't it? And that whole thing. Yeah. But uh let's let's talk. Three for three. You're doing well. Here's another one. Thank you, Your Holiness. Awesome speech. 
<laughs> Bushism or not. <laughs> I think I think we have a follow-up to my other tweet. <laughs> oh yeah, it just gets better. It just gets better, Jimmy. <laughs> Fun times. Definitely not Hell World. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Hey, do you, do you, do you like movies? Do you, do you like do you like surfs? Do you want do you want do you want movies and surf surfs watching the movies? So then come over to the new channels. It's the surf the cinema. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Can you do the thing? You know that uh, thumbs up and comment and all those things that help us out in the algorithm that controls every aspect of our lives. Also, if you happen to have a Facebook account, um, can you can you delete it? Like just just delete it. You should probably delete your Facebook account because it's just. It's not a great company, but hey, if you can't do that for whatever reason, I understand. And uh, could you also go to facebook.com slash the surf times then and uh, give us a little like and a follow. We're just trying to push back against the fact that people like Ben Shapiro happen to dominate the platform entirely. And when everyone asks, why do older generations believe the things they believe? One of the problems is the majority of them on social media use Facebook. So to counter that, uh, we're just going to be on there too now. Also, if you happen to have a union or a worker co-op or even a leftist project podcast website, Zoom, MySpace, it doesn't matter. We will advertise it for free on this channel. All you got to do is go to wearesurfs.com and use the forms that we got there, wearesurfs.com. Thanks, everybody. To our gods, I'm Raft and Xander Corvus. We shall build golden idols in your honor. To our monarch, Tom Spiker. Our soft, spongy flesh is yours to command. To our lords, Evan Nudi, Trevor R., Alexander Thaler, Ryan Lubin, Bisexual Black Gamer, Toe Fox, and Jeffrey Lamb, we proudly carry your sigils onto the battlefield. And to our knights of the round table, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, Multimondi, Timothy Hart, Trevor Janis, Lemmy 101, Anthropophagic, Saren 42, Chronic to Hemp Hog, Kelly Kotka, The Great Poudini, Von Janney, Catherine, Radical Maniac, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, J. Fraser Cartwright, Jimmy Big Nuts, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Political Puppy, Andreas Chiringuito, Zach Christensen, Nicholas Marks, Jopi, Josh Mickelson, Melissa Murphy, Todd Buckingham, Todd Lajeunesse, and Constance Joyce Lacheris. We tip our cap and lift our mug and salute you.